Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to Ramacro. In today's video, which has been voted for by patrons, I'll be sharing with you a montage of my encounters with Jehovah's Witnesses doing public witnessing or cart preaching over the past five years. So far I've managed to film a number of conversations beginning in 2017 when I had my chat with Dave at Disneyland. As you're going to see, I also had a conversation in London in the summer of 2018, which was cut short when the witness I was speaking to was apparently warned about me by a minder who was circling. This footage has never seen the light of day until now, so I hope you'll find that interesting. As you can imagine, following the easing of COVID restrictions and the resumption of public witnessing by Jehovah's Witnesses, it's been much easier to have and film these exchanges, and I hope to have many more of them in the months and years ahead. Hopefully you'll notice that rather than trying to harass or antagonize Jehovah's Witnesses, my approach is always to engage in polite dialogue in which seeds are sown and questions are asked that witnesses might not want to answer. In any case, here is the montage as graciously edited by Tibor. Enjoy. But here's an honest question for you. Yeah. Would you would you rather be living now in 2017 or in 1940? I would rather be living now. Um, because I get very excited about the, the preaching activity and there's just a lot going on with that. Oh, I know, but apart from that, because if, if what you're saying is true, then 1940 would be the ideal time to live because the world's getting worse and worse. So, it, according to your theory, 1940 would be much better. Oh, it was. It was, it was a much more peaceful time, obviously, yeah. pre-World War I. But I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm more excited about just the preaching activity, and I'll take living in... A difficult society yeah so that I can be immersed in this an issue I have I mean you're right there's lots of suffering in the world and lots of things that are messed up but I have to ask if, if you had a choice between living now in 2022 or living in 1900 which would you prefer I mean as a woman yeah a white woman yeah <laughs> I would rather live now yeah but the truth is, there's like, the system is not getting better. Because if we look at just the basics, what the Bible says, love well, one we another. Had in, we had um, the civil rights movement in the 1950s yeah. and 60s, and right up until um, you know the middle of the 20th century, black people were being segregated, and now they're not. Yeah. And so that, that's just one example. I would point to of where things actually have gotten better. Yeah. There's always in any kind of human society going to be setbacks and corruption and yeah. people taking advantage of the system and injustice. But overall, surely you'd agree that there's a general upward curve in terms of mankind moving forward and sorting out their issues, surely. There is, but then mm. why is there still so much issues on, on the result? Because like you said, mm. So much, we like scientifically speaking, we are like gaining so much now, and so much has been like discovered recently. Mm. And then, like you, like I said, and like you said, so much has been discovered also to produce food mm. for the whole planet. Mm. But there's still like millions of people that can be feeding the family, and that's mm. why they're coming here. Mm. So yes, I'm right about you. So much things have progressed. But then it's like, why does it progress? And it still is getting worse at the same time. Mm. Yeah. It seems like it's getting out of hand. And like, you'll be surprised, but actually the Bible says that basically God is not responsible because he's not, he's not um, directing this world right now. I've never heard anything that's like um, a slam dunk this is why we're the truth. I see. A lot of it seems to be theological and, well, you need faith. And you need faith to believe this happened. And if you 
believe this happened, then you'll also, you also must believe that this happened, and which is essentially what all religions say at some level. So I'm, I'm interested in hearing what's your slam dunk argument as to why you have the truth. Right. Um, I think, and I'm going back in time with my situation when I first started to absorb, you know, this is I had to ask myself, um, is there a God? Is there a creator? I mean, you got to start with that. Because if there's not, then, I mean, this this doesn't even make any, any sense. And I came to the conclusion that there is a God, a creator, someone who even has a personality of love, etc. So then from there, okay, let's assume there is a God, a creator, a God of love. What next? Does he have you know, hundreds, even thousands of religions, if you will, on earth that represent him that are teaching slightly different things? Mm -hmm. Or does he have, is there just one truth? Mm -hmm. And logically, at least for me, there would just be one. He would have one means of approved worship. That's it. I'm obviously interested in, in believing what's true. Yes. And if, if I'm going to follow my family and become a Jehovah's Witness, I'm going to want to do it because it's the but, truth. But so, you need to live by yourself, exactly. You need but to, what's the most compelling argument that you can give me that it's true? That it's true. We all have different reasons. Right. For me, it was more important to know the fact that it was really great. However, for other people, it's like they don't understand why there is a creator that can do everything perfectly. There is suffering, so the, 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 they need to understand what is the background that God is allowing suffering. That can be answered from the Bible as well. If you're interested, we have that book. I'm not, I don't speak Chinese. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> this is Chinese. But if yeah. you go to the website, you can sure. find it in English, and it tells you what is the basic teachings. Sure. And I would suggest to do your own research. I suggest you that you do your own research, have a look at the website, have yeah. a look at the Bible, yeah. investigate for yourself. Because but I cannot you, you can't give me evidence, basically, that it's true. Well, it's what Pilate said in the Bible, no? But it's true. Yeah, well, anyone can say that, but ultimately, if it's true, there should be a way of proving it, shouldn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have anything that you can... Logic. Just logic. Logic. Yeah. And what does the Bible say about it? Lots of people here in Croatia believe in the ransom. They believe that <clears throat> Jesus died for our sins. So I, I think my question would be, because it sounds a little bit like in order to survive Armageddon, what I would need to do is be a Jehovah's Witness. It sounds a little bit like that. Okay. Uh... And, and my question would be, how can we establish, how can we prove that Jehovah's Witnesses are the one and only true religion? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me think in English first. That's okay. I don't have to explain this situation yeah. very easily. Okay. Uh, so, Bible study is yeah. a key point in that. You get to know what the Bible says through that Bible study. Yeah. And then you have a chance to decide and be like, okay, are they, do these people live according to what the Bible what Yeah. Bible really says? Or do these people live according to what the Bible believes? Yeah. And that's how you can decide. It's right. up to you to decide what do you want to believe in and what yeah. you want to be. God doesn't want anybody, He hasn't forced anyone to be to not do what they don't want to. Right. He gave us free will. Every single person on this planet. And it's up to us to decide what we want. Yeah. Okay? You maybe don't agree with us. That's no, fine. No, no, I, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm it's just. fine to disagree. Yeah. That's perfectly yeah. fine. But through Bible study and through, uh, to see what Bible really teaches, it really says, you can see. Okay, are these correct? Are these? Is this religion correct? Is that religion correct? Or is this? Or are we correct? You have to decide for yourself. I'm kind of remembering now. Um, wasn't it uh, a specific period, like 1914 to 1919, when the organization was chosen? It was around that time when they felt like um, Jesus is indeed 
using this organization um, as his representatives. Yeah. I mean, an exact date, you know, obviously. I, but yes, that time frame. But the problem I have is that if I were to fail to find evidence that Jehovah's Witnesses are the one true religion, um, I would have to reject Jehovah's Witnesses. And based on that, I would die, wouldn't I? Let me, let me just show, um, so, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, but yeah. I think it's gonna be kind of a straight, I'm doing a straight shot here at a Go point I'm trying to make. Go for it. Revelation 4.11, mm. you are worthy Jehovah, I think you know Jehovah is God's name. You are worthy, Jehovah our God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power because, and this is what I'm getting at, you created all things and because of your will, they came into existence and were created. Mm. So I think, um, I think it becomes even almost a bit inexcusable if a person were to get to a point they live a full life and they still conclude that that Jehovah doesn't exist because well, this, we create, yeah. you know. And I don't mean to, you know. I don't think I've represented my argument very well because I'm talking about evidence. Uh -huh. And when Jesus was on the earth, if I were to interpret the New Testament literally, uh -huh. he performed miracles. And when asked as to why he performed miracles, I'm pretty sure he said, so that I can convince people. Well, I guess the question I need to ask is, is, is it a case that you're gonna survive this crushing if you are a Jehovah's Witness and not survive it if you're not a Jehovah's Witness? The Bible doesn't say, and the Jehovah's, will sit, but Jehovah's Witnesses will possess the earth. Oh, so it's just as long as you're a good person, you're going to survive. Well, do you agree with me that I can have the name Jehovah's Witness and mm. still in a form, don't practice at all, nothing of what I'm, I'm being taught? Mm. Would that be good? No. My heart is not pure. My heart is not doing good. I guess so, what, what, what would matter for me is yeah. that you're a good person and that yeah. you, don't, you don't set out to harm people deliberately and that you're a fine upstanding person and you know that you're not dishonest or anything and w when i look around and interact with people i'm seeing that for the most part lo that describes lots of people they just they do good for the sake of doing good and because they don't want people to do bad to them yeah. and i guess i'm concerned about the prospect of there being a quote-unquote crushing of, of people just because they're not in a certain religious group, even though they're good people, you know? Yeah. That, that's what would worry but, me. Like I said, it's not something I get to decide who is who. Right. So, uh, I guess to be meek, yeah. in order to not die, yeah. um, what I would need to do is, is um, buy a Bible. I mean, I do have a Bible, but you I have, in have... fact, I, I have several Bibles, yeah. but what I would need to do is, is live by what's in the Bible, and that would, yes. be, in, that would be enough to survive. Well, uh, believing it? in God. Yeah. And one more thing, uh, Jesus Christ. Right. Is oh God's yeah. Son. Right. And He sent Him on Earth to die for, uh, so that He uh, can forgive our sins, because uh, like a ransom. Right. That's why He was here on Earth. Right. And he, when He died, He paid that necessary ransom so that everyone can have a chance to live in a peace with God, being God's friend, be God's friend and everything. And it's important to believe in that. So believe in what Bible says, live according to Bible principles because the Bible is letter from God. Mm. And to accept uh, what Jesus Christ did for us. Yeah. Because God sent him for that purpose. Yeah. He did. And to uh, obey God's commands. Yeah. yeah. I guess what I'm getting at is you know, I, I don't consider myself a, a believer, really. I'm okay. not very religious. Um, okay. But I am aware that, you know, lots of people around me are religious. Okay. I mean, we live in a very religious country, don't we, yeah. in Croatia? Um, lots of people have Bibles, and they don't just have Bibles, but they, 
um, believe in the God of the Bible and they consider themselves Christian. Yes. So, so let's say you know a, a believer in the Bible is, is a really, really good person. They give to charity, they do good works. Uh, do, do they, are they safe when Armageddon comes? It's not enough just to say, I believe. Mm. It's not enough to be a good person. Mm. Because you have to, saying I believe without proving that is not enough. You have to show with your uh, uh, I'm, wait, I need to remember okay. the word. Yes. So how you live. For example, if you say, oh, I believe in God and I I'm religious, and then you come out of church and swear a lot. Yeah. That's not true. That's yeah. not a person who really believes. So it's not just enough to say, I believe in God, yeah. I, yeah, I'm religious. You need to live accordingly to what the Bible says. Yeah. If there was anything, do you, if it could be proven, if it could be proven beyond a doubt, your beliefs weren't true for reasons that you've overlooked. Would you would you want to leave behind your beliefs? You know, that's that question has been asked to me before. Yeah. And you know, of course, of course I would. Yeah. But you know, it's it's like it's like saying, you know, how convinced are you that you are at Disneyland today? Yeah, I know, I know. If you can prove you're not a Disney, you know, that's, you're, you're that's what level I'm at. Already. Yeah. I really am, yeah. yeah. And I really admire how genuine you are with that. Yeah. What was it about evolution that didn't make sense? Well, like the Bible says, for example, that the, it was created mm. from scratch. How evolution is, it is like a progress. How yeah. within the evolution is you had to Main streams like we, what's it called? It almost started a long time. So there yeah. was some that you change from species to species yeah. immediately in such a very short time. However, you had the neo Darwinist that they change from species to species gradually. I don't think any evolutionist teaches that boom, there was a giraffe where previously there wasn't a giraffe. Exactly. However, it's yeah. very interesting that. The Bible that's talking about the creation. If you check the chapter one of Genesis, yeah, you need to understand also the um, a bit of the etymology mm. because although it's, it's talking about days, right? it's like we were talking about in the days of Shakespeare, how mm. we were talking a long time. So it's more like that sense that you're talking for a long time, it doesn't tell you specifically, but it tells you like according to the what's it called the fossil record that the sea creatures were first created and the, like, the winds ones, you know, the creatures... But life that, began in the oceans. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So those creatures were created first. So if you believe that if you could go back to a certain point in time, mm -hmm. if you could travel to the point of creation, yeah. you would see instantly all of life popping into existence. Well, that's the thing. I investigated myself. Fossil record doesn't show you a gradual transformation. You think it came suddenly? Suddenly, yeah, you can't call it like that. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean suddenly? Just well, that would. I mean, God could take his time doing it if he wanted, exactly. but I don't know why he would need to do that. If, I guess if he wants there to be giraffes, yeah, it's boom, exactly. there's a giraffe. So you believe you don't believe in evolution then? To a point, yeah, there are some things that is that evolve, but not mankind like you and I. Or the evolution of, say, butterflies and things like those. We believe in those things. Also, oh, life did evolve, but only to a certain extent. Is that what you believe? No, we say life was created. Jehovah right. God created the man and the woman. But there are some things that evolve. Some but things evolve. Yes. Will it say that in here as well? Well, well that's right, yes. Oh, it will? Yes. Okay. But not mankind like you and I. We were created. That's we're right. different. That's right, yes. Okay. And um, so, if, if, is there like a, any kind of study program involved? Yes, there is, yes, yes. yes. Right, and that's, that's going to be on the website, is it? That's right, yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you were talking about suffering. What, how, how do we get rid of suffering? Suffering. Sorry? Sorry? How do we get rid of suffering? 
God will, will do well. God will get rid of the suffering. That's what the Bible says. How? how? You know God's kingdom. God's kingdom. I, I, yeah, but I don't know what the what would the mechanism be for getting rid of stuff because obviously, politically speaking, there's a lot of suffering and there's lots of different ideas as to how to deal with things like poverty and uh, diseases and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. well, we don't get in, involved into politics. We just get, we just believe what the Bible says. That, but what does the Bible say about getting rid of suffering? He will bring his kingdom. And that will, you know, I don't understand how that would work. How would the kingdom get rid of suffering? Well, it's a long explanation. I'm not the best one, actually. But I would suggest you to have a look at what's sure. Or we can arrange another time. Uh, sure. We'll have a chat about that. Okay. So, when you say about the system, yeah. um, what, what do you think? Because it says a world in turmoil, how can you cope? What, what's, what, 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 I guess what I'm asking is what's expected of me? So it, it says a free Bible course. Yeah. What, what's the purpose of the Bible course and what would I ultimately get from, from doing the Bible course, I guess is my question. Yeah, well, I mean, the Bible course, we have to agree that there are so many religions that say, well, we follow the Bible. And but they don't say the same thing mm. so that's confusing because you have one book so mm. there should be just one way to to read it and to to you know follow our, our life um you know i'm i speak french so i'm like trying to no 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 <laughs> you're doing really well <laughs> yeah you. so yeah there should be just one way but there are many so this what the bible course does is not telling what we believe in but what the bible says because that's basically what is important to know it's not what men think is the right way to serve god but what he says about what is the right way what how he wants to humans like how he wants them to live and also what's his thoughts about the future because like in the bible it's a huge book so sometimes it's hard like i don't i'm sure if i was telling you yes we're going to start from the first page and we're gonna go on to the last and it's that thick you're like no thanks you know there's all that stuff about how to build a tabernacle and yeah where they're going through all the different tribes yeah, and, and i find that a bit tedious to be honest yes and it's not useful yeah you know what does it do for me mm. like right now and mm. i understand that i never kind of kind of linked um how can i put it um, highly educated jobs with kind of with you know without wanting any disrespect with Jehovah's Witnesses because yeah. you know one thing that you know I remember is that it's you know higher education's a bit frowned on isn't it? Well I mean it's always basically what they are telling us is not, do not focus do not make this the priority in your life yeah but this is a choice yeah and I mean like I'm I'm working I yeah. know what I'm doing yeah I, know I have loads of friends like some are engineers yeah but our main goal in life is not to make money it's not to take enjoy this system too much because we believe that there's something better ahead okay and you know like and I can take I, I go for coffees with friends but I can also take some of my time to volunteer and do that kind of work I've looked into Scientology a little bit and they have this thing called disconnection where if you, let's say you become a Scientologist, if you find that you no longer agree with it and let's say you are vocal about disagreeing with it, you're what's called disconnected as a suppressive person. Is, is there anything like that at all that I should be wary of? No? There's a disciplining arrangement in the Christian congregation, right, which is called disfellowshipping, right, which some people have, have you know, I mean, it's basically, I, I, have you heard of, uh, I don't know, but, but maybe the term excommunication in, in, in some, in some terms. Yeah, and I'm like, not know what excommunication is. Basically, yeah. that's not what this is. Yeah. Being, to, to 
this fellowshipping is, is, a, is, is a, I mean, if you had a Bible study with us, you'd understand. What, basically, it's just a, it's a discipline in arrangement. Right. To protect the congregation. Right. And to and to help the individual to make straight paths for their feet to to, to restore their relationship with. Right. Them. But that's not. I mean, it's not. I mean, that's only for somebody who's a dedicated baptized witness who's really erred. It's a, it's a loving arrangement to help someone sure. be corrected. Sure. It's well, not a. It's, it's nothing like disconnection. Well, we don't believe in disconnect. We believe in unity. Yeah. And we, yeah. It's a loving. This we're a loving brotherhood. We're a family. But what we're, what we're trying to say is that if someone decides to leave, that's their choice. We're not we're not forced. You're not bound to something. Right. It, it's it, it's e each one of us has a, a, a responsibility. When we make a dedication, when we learn. Uh, that this is what we want to do. We make a yeah. dedication. That's yeah. a personal choice. So it's not like you, you, you know, you decide. There's no. You, what, so you won't you, you won't be penalised if you get baptised and you later decide that you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness. It's not like you're going to be punished by, let's say, your family not being able to talk to you no, again. No, there's not, no, not no. But we would obviously try to, you know, to help you to return to Jehovah. Right. We want you uh, lovingly. But we, we wouldn't, you know, we try, and, mm. and that has happened. There's quite mm. a few who have left, yeah, and uh, have not returned. Mm -hmm. Many have returned mm. after a while. They've been inactive or been uh, away from the congregation. Then they've realized they've, 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 you know, they've they've missed. They've, they felt that they were missing out on something, didn't they? I'm thinking more about people who get baptized and then they just they say you know i don't believe this anymore and i don't want to be a jehovah's witness anymore would they would they be disciplined or, or, or anything it's their choice at, at, at the end of the day mm. it, it's you know yeah you know, it's a decision it's their decision but what's the most compelling argument that you can give me that it's true it is true we all have different risks right me it was more important to know the fact that it was really great. However, for all the people, it's like they don't understand why there is a creator that can do everything perfectly. There is suffering, so the, 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 they need to understand what is the background that God is allowing suffering. That can be answered from the Bible as well. If you're interested, we have that book. I'm not. I don't speak Chinese. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's Chinese. But if yeah. you go to the website, you can sure. find it in English, and it tells you what is the basic features. Sure. And I would suggest to do your own research. And what's? Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah. Just have one word. Sorry. Have one word as well. Oh yeah. Just one word. Uh, Am I inconveniencing? Uh, sorry, I was just having a chat. I just wanted to say something. Uh, okay. Sorry. Do you get many conversations? Sometimes. Yeah. It depends on the location. Sure. Is this a good location for? It's a bit windy today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is. But I'd rather it was like the weather today than it was yesterday. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or it's been a real heat wave, hasn't it? Yeah. Mad. Yeah. You seen? I would suggest you that you do you want to research. Have a look to the website. Have yeah. Look at the Bible. Yeah. Investigate for yourself. Because you, you can't give me evidence, basically, that it's true. Well, it's what Pilate said in the Bible, no? But it's true. Yeah, well, anyone can say that, but ultimately, if it's true, there should be a way of proving it, shouldn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't logic. have anything that you can... Logic. Just logic? Just logic. Yeah. And what does the Bible say about it? So that's it. That's all we wanted to share with you. I believe the footage we've just seen demonstrates two things. Firstly, Jehovah's Witness beliefs don't make much sense and quickly unravel when you start to ask the wrong questions. And secondly, kind, respectful dialogue with witnesses is possible and ultimately yields the best results. In any case, I hope you found this montage interesting. Many thanks again to my patrons for voting for you to see it. And as always, thank you so much for watching.